Dan back here. What's up, everybody? Yeah, how's it going? So we've got a great show for you guys today. To kick things off, we're going to give you guys a rundown of Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference from this past Monday. And there's also an, an uh, update on the new search engine that Facebook's got for influencer marketing. That's right. And in today's uh, live video strategy segment, I'm going to talk to you about cross-posting versus simulcasting, what that means when it comes to live video, and how is the best way it's going to be for you to use it. Yeah, and then our newest segment to switch it up, um, we're going to be doing a gear review on a mic that I really like, and that is the iRig HD Mic 2. It's Jimmy is <laughs> waving around like a madman in the background. Like crazy, but hey, uh, thank you all so much for joining us today. And as always, we do this live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. right here. If you're watching right now live, we're at facebook.com forward slash switcher studio. And we're so glad you're here. And what we want you to do is go ahead and tell us where you're watching from. If you're watching this live right now, just leave in the comments over there or down there, depending on where you're watching from. Just let us know where you're at. We like to say hi to everybody and just see where everybody's at right now. Um, and also, go ahead and share this video out to your timeline if you've got some other friends or anybody you think that might be interested in seeing this uh, awesome information about live video and everything that we're doing here at Switcher Studio. But. Uh, yeah, with all that being said, we should just get right down to it and talk about some industry news. Yeah, so to kick things off, the first thing, of course, is an overview of Apple's keynote from this past Monday. So this was the Worldwide Developers Conference. Um, instead of being product-based, it was a software-based keynote. Uh, it was hosted by Craig Federighi, who's the Senior Vice P of Software Engineering. A lot of other really cool Apple employees were up on stage introducing different things as well. And I'm going to give you guys some of the main key takeaways that we had from this conference. Also, for all the Switcher Studio users out there, also how these updates will affect Switcher Studio. So the first thing, of course, is they discussed iOS 12 and what is going to come from that. Now, the good news is any device that can currently run iOS 11 will be able to run iOS 12. So you guys aren't going to have to run out and buy new devices. Any of you guys using some of the older devices, like the iPhone SE or the iPod Touch 6, those are still going to be able to be used with iOS 12. So that's definitely really exciting. It's going to allow you guys to expand if you want, but you can keep the collection of devices that you have as well. Another really cool update is a new search feature for your photos. So currently in your photo album, everything's just in chronological order. You can put things into folders if you want, but you've got to search through everything and find things to put them in folders. With this new update to the photo album app with iOS 12, you're going to be able to search by keywords, by event tags, by location tags, and it will even recognize familiar faces in those photos and you can search by faces. So that's going to be a really easy way to find what you're looking for when you're looking for it. It's going to make it easier to put into different custom-made folders. And for Switcher Studio users, this will allow you to make those folders in advance. And then when you go into the app, you can import from that folder only instead of scrolling through your entire camera roll. Um, Another big takeaway is an update to FaceTime. So right now it's a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime production. That's how it's always been. But with this new update, there's going to be up to 32 participants loud in the uh, FaceTime app. So you'll be able to either start from scratch, call each person as you need them, or if you already have a message thread going on, a group chat message thread, you'll be able to dial all of those people at once and instantly start a FaceTime conversation. So that's going to be really cool for remote interviews where you've got multiple participants. You'll be able to run that right from FaceTime and then use iOS screen sharing to bring it in as an interview setting for a live video. And the last big takeaway we had was an update on the AR kit. So a cool thing with this is by just showing uh, your phone camera to any object and dragging your finger on the screen, you'll be able to take both 2D and 3D measurements. Some examples of this are seeing what size a photo is to buy a new frame for it, 
or if you're doing any kind of construction, figuring out what size the different components for wood or anything else would be. And for any of you guys doing crafting videos, this is gonna be a really cool way to show these measurements to your audience. Again, with iOS screen sharing, instead of just saying, you know, you need a five by 10, you can draw on the screen and they'll see the object they need with five by 10 written on it. That, that's like a lot of cool stuff yeah. that they've got going on. Like the, the what, it, what I kind of took away was Tim Cook said like, this is all about software today. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, it's really good to see Apple just focusing on, instead of it, you know, the big buzz is always like, if there's gonna be a hardware push, but this time I was really saying like, no, we're making iOS much more streamlined, much more efficient and faster. I think that's like one of the coolest, that, that's really like my main takeaway from this is that they're, it shows that they're making kind of an emphasis on that. But especially when it comes to video, if you think about augmented reality, like you were just saying, like augmented reality is inherently video related. Like you need a screen to kind of project those augmented reality components. And what they just announced was a, um, it was a universal open source format. I, I believe it's called USDZ. Um, if I'm wrong about that, please correct me, but it's uh, just an open source uh, format for making these AR type files really portable. They designed the, the uh, SDK for this with Pixar. So in my mind, I'm seeing that as like another emphasis on a video related topic and they're gonna be trying to make those experiences with augmented reality more important, especially as they continue going on with um, iOS and, and things with that. So I thought it was really interesting how they made all that work. Um, but if and nobody else has any comments on that, I think we move on to the next topic, but that was pretty neat. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I was going to talk to everybody about is a recently a website called allfacebook.de. It's a German based uh, website that reports on topics related to Facebook. Uh, leaked a photo of what uh, looks to be, and actually Dan, you have a photo of it. You might as well just go ahead and throw it up there. Yeah, I can throw that up for, it's, for you. Um, they leaked a photo of an interface that Facebook's developed that is going to allow advertisers to search for influencer marketers. Um, so this is a pretty interesting uh, tool that Facebook's created. Um, and it's just kind of showing this is a beta program that they've released. The idea here is that advertisers can search for creators that have specific audiences based on a lot of demographics. So some of those demographics are things like the top countries where they're popular, interests, gender, education history, relationship status, life events. Um, and I think what's interesting for this is it's a way for brands to try to make more compelling marketing content, which means if they think that they can make more compelling stuff, they're probably more likely to spend money on advertisements on Facebook using these marketers. So it's pretty interesting play for Facebook to try to tie that stuff together. And by paying the influencers, those influencers are more likely to be generating content on Facebook instead of going to other places they could go, such as YouTube, which is historically one of the largest like influencer marketing um, platforms. Um, but I think another uh, kind of buzz phrase from the articles I was reading about this is like, this is the crowdsourced future of advertising. So um, just, just more emphasis that content creators are, are more and more becoming the way that advertising and the way that marketers are looking to convey their ideas and to sell their products and push their different brands and things like that. Um, and I think with this tool, what they're showing is they really want advertisers to have the ability to push out v more relevant ads. And a tool like this that Facebook obviously spent a lot of time creating just allows them to kind of increase that ad spend just by connecting them with people that are creating more content, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's really like a really interesting uh, toolkit that they've made to do this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is also going to be really great for content creators as a way to get more exposure. You know, right now, it can be hard unless, you know, you're already at that top level for content creation or you pop up at the top of a Google search to get noticed by businesses to you know, create content for advertising and promotions. And this way with this search engine, it's gonna give an opportunity to a lot of different content creators to move up, you know, get that exposure, get noticed by other companies. So it's a win-win for everyone really coming out of this. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but if, 
uh, if you if you see any more articles related to just how this has been going on, or I guess we'll see further developments with this, but uh, if you have anything like that, uh, just drop a link down in the comments section. And by the way, Dan, is anybody letting us know where they're uh, where they're from over there? In the yeah, we've got all, all all sorts of stuff. Awesome. At first, when I said I guess we're really big in uh, Texas right now. It's not, it's not a thing like big in Texas. We're, we're, I got oh, a couple it. people from Everything's Houston. Everything's big in Texas. Got a couple right. people tuning in from Houston. I see Dallas in here, uh, right. California. Um, Tim, the video guys, watch from Bristol, Tennessee. Hey, Tim. What's up? Um, not far. Chris Carson, I see, is in here from Ohio. Howdy, Chris. Um, yeah, Northern California. So, yeah, people all over. West Coast. Um, Represent. Yeah, thank you. And then I think my favorite one here is Ernesto saying, watching from five feet away. Hello, Ernesto. <laughs> I can say hello to him on the stream. And Dan, as you say, it's saying right literally there. within reach of Ernesto <laughs> right now saying hi. Um, oh, man, that's great. Well, um, I think that's all we've got right now for um, industry news. What we're going to do is move on to another segment that we do in our show every week. And it's called Live Video Strategy. And in this segment, what we like to do is share some tips and tricks with you. Sometimes we'll feature um, a blog post that we've created and we'll just let you know what we're thinking when it comes to video strategy related around a specific subject. And today what we're going to be talking about is cross-posting versus simulcasting. Now cross-posting is not, re not really that much of a new term, but cross-posting is kind of generally where you've got a Twitter account and you've got a Facebook account. Maybe you're using some sort of service like if this then that. You create one tweet and it goes to both places. I mean, that's kind of historically the most generic, simplest form of what cross-posting is. Um, but when it comes to live video, this kind of aspect of cross-posting is more, I guess it's better termed as simulcasting. And we actually have a blog post about this. Uh, Dan, if you happen to feel like going and grabbing that and posting it up there. I've already got it open for it's, you. It's from a year ago now. So this is how long you know simulcasting has been a thing. But recently, Facebook, Facebook's also had cross-posting available, but uh, as of about May 8th of 2018, Facebook has opened up cross-posting to live video. So what you can do now is you can set up a relationship between multiple Facebook pages, and when you create a live video and schedule it, you can choose to have that live video cross-posted to multiple pages. So it's like simulcasting within Facebook. Um, so it's a very interesting uh, new way. You've always been able to take vo uh, videos that are, may have been created from one source or photos and things like that and cross post them between different pages. But now with live video, there's some different implications for how you might be able to use that and what you can do with it. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about that. So first thing, let's talk about pros and cons between cross posting and simulcasting. Now, cross posting is just within Facebook. So let's just start there. The cross posting here, one of the main things is it's zero cost to reach a bigger audience. With simulcasting, what you end up having to do is pay an external service, and it typically costs money to have your live video stream sent to them and then served to multiple locations. With cross-posting, there's really, it's essentially free through Facebook. You're just sharing your live video within Facebook. Um, now with that, a kind of a con that you might take away from it is that you're limited to one platform, and if you're into getting out to multiple platforms and multiple different audiences that are using different platforms in different ways, you're not going to be doing that. You're going to be working within one platform even though you're going to multiple pages. So this is just something to take into consideration with that. Um, a really good pro or one of the, I think, great positive benefits of using cross-posting is that your video insights um, and the engagement stats for both postings are available to view in one interface. So um, I will, I'll show you a video later where you can kind of see the back end of video, but ultimately when you want to go back and you want to look at your video insights, you can see the individual breakdown per post for those videos. So if you posted to uh, one page that you're an administrator over and a second page that you're also the administrator of, you can see the data for both of those posts individually. And that's really great because it's going to help you kind of identify how they're performing with different audiences and just different demographics based on where you're posting it. So it just kind of gives you this extra insight. Um, one of the cons that, uh, I, I guess you can call it a con, but there, there may be some other benefits to thinking things this way. And we're going to be kind of researching this and, and making it into a future blog post with more information. But right now there's no integration for viewing comments and reactions in a single feed. 
Um, at least it's not natively through the Facebook app. Whenever you have this video going out, the interactions and the comments, they're going to be unique to each page that they're on. So there's not going to be a conversation that is unified between mul multiple pages that you've cross posted to. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that if you intend to have a dialogue with your audience, you need to be keeping track of who you're specifically trying to talk to. Um, so that could just be another just headache to kind of think about. Um, here's an, uh, let's talk about simulcasting. So here's some of the pros of simulcasting. It's going to let you re reach audiences on multiple platforms. So if that's really what you want to do is you've got a YouTube following and you've got um, a Periscope following and you're trying to reach people through the Twitter and go that way, you're going to want to do a simulcast service like Restream or uh, Restream.io. Somebody help me out. What are, what are the uh, names of some other ones? Switchboard.live yeah. is a Switchboard. big one. Is another one of these. There's a whole list of some of these services in that blog post that Dan posted, so I encourage you to go check that out. Um, but let's talk about some of the cons. It's going to cost more money than free. Uh, so it's going to cost you more money to get that bigger audience. And I think the other thing that's a con here is the, the comments and engagement, they, they're like so platform specific. So it's kind of difficult to tailor your message to the YouTube uh, audience. Um, for Facebook, for example, what we want you to do is follow us. But for YouTube, we want you to subscribe. So having to say both of those and kind of mix up the message for your audience is another thing just, again, to take into consideration. One of the last pros that um, I just realized is uh, <laughs> when you create a Facebook stream, you only got to create one RTMP stream and one key. When you're using these multiple platforms, often what you're going to have to do is go to each one of your platforms and services, gather your, your streaming information, and then you're going to have to post those and drag them all into that restreaming service or that other simulcasting service. So it's just a little bit more overhead work that you have to deal with. With Facebook, it's kind of all into one thing. Um, and if you want to see with this, Dan, if you could roll that video, yeah, here's generally what the back end of setting up cross posting looks like. It is a setting you have to turn on. If you're an administrator of a page, just go to your page and in the upper right corner of the page, there's a little button that says settings. And then down to the left, there's a cross posting uh, item in the column. And once you're in there, here's what you do. You just search for uh, one of their pages. And this one, I just looked up Weekend Chocolate Warriors because they're great. And uh, it's going to oh, give you man. two options. It says, do you want them to be automatically allowed to post or manually? And then you get this. It's a link that you send to them basically asking permission, saying, hey, do we want to have this relationship for cross posting? Um, and then once you go into your videos, I just kind of uh, threw this together. What you can see is you have the ability, once you go look at your video library, you click on edit for any video, you can see uh, under the, it's on the right of every video, you have the ability to see what happens uh, for cross-posting there. You just hover over the information uh, logo. But yeah, that's just some, some uh, please rewind the video later on just to see how you get into that and do your research on how this works. But Here's some of the main takeaways. Um, it, it's going to allow you to see insights and metrics for videos based on different target audiences. So that could be beneficial to you. If you can find um, another brand that you want to work with and see how your, your content can work with them, cross-posting through Facebook is a great way of doing that. Um, it, you, and again, you only need to set up the stream one time, and it goes to these multiple places. So that's a huge takeaway. Um, and I think the main takeaway from all of this sort of stuff, and how do we, should I be separating or whatnot? Cross promotion is a term that I think is, is really important to remember. It, it's just as important to cross promote your, your brand as it is to be cross posting. So maybe you want to, what you really want to do is uh, cross post your different uh, audiences and send them to the one place you want them to go rather than trying to get the message out to all of them at once. Like, do a campaign that's going to send people into the specific place that you'd like to go. So I think we can have more information about this down the road. But um, yeah, that's just kind of my takeaway on a lot of how cross-posting should be used and some of the things you should take into consideration when you're doing that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think this is going to be big for a lot of, you know, especially video production companies. In the past, we've discussed on Stream Squad, you know, where should you send your video to if you're not using a simulcasting service? And a lot of people would go live on one page meaning that those followers get the notification that you're live, but then they're sharing it onto other pages. So those other pages 
it might be seen, but not as large an amount because they're not getting a notification saying that page is live. And this is going to be great, you know, for example, you as a video producer, you want to have content on your page showing what you can do, what your skills are, but your clients are still going to want to have that footage on their page because it's their video. They want to show their event or their church service or their concert or whatever they're doing. So this is a great way to be able to put it on both pages. Both pages get the notification and that way you're getting that full you know, amount of engagement and views. But again, like Jimmy said, it's still great to do that cross promotion. So you on your page should reference your client and say, hey, check them out. They've got some really cool stuff coming up. And your client, you know, based just as a thing should be you know, saying thanks to this video producer, they did a great job, check out some of their other work and contact them if you need something too. And that's a simple example of how it's, I mean, it's a symbiotic relationship between multiple pages. It could be pages that you're the administrator of, so you could be the administrator of five different pages and you wanted to go out to five different audiences that you've, uh, that you've built up. Or it can be with uh, just kind of, just cross promotional with other brands and things that are adjacent to what you're doing. So. Um, these are all just really important things to keep in mind. And I think, Dan, we currently have, uh, in, in addition to the video that we all got to see, there's also a knowledge base article about this. Is that right? Yeah, I do have a knowledge base article. Let me go ahead and pop that into the comments What's, for everybody. What, now, what do you learn from the knowledge base article about this? What, what is it showing you how to do? It's, it's showing you how to set up the, how like, turn it on, pretty okay. much that video that you showed earlier. Step it's going to show step. you the step by step how to do it. Um, where to get all your information and where to, where to awesome. what buttons to click and, and how to do so it. That's so that's posted yeah. up there now? In the so that's in the, that's in the comments there. Awesome. And um, yeah, speaking of the comments and cross-posting, I see Chris Carson in here said <laughs> they'll be doing some cross-posting today or on Sunday when they do their uh, something cool. They're going to be doing a live action movie on, yeah. on Sunday. So. Not, it's not just a live action movie. It's a live movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, <not> the, <laughs> it's like not an animated film. It's a live action it's actually um, going to be live. Yeah, so Chris, if you're, I think he was watching. Chris, if you're still watching, um, pop a link in there if people want to yeah, check that out. I think it's pretty I, cool. I don't have one ready. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we also have it on our, on yeah, our Twitter we, and everything. We've got so. it on okay, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, and there's also a post on our Facebook page from earlier as well. So that'll be a link. But again, Chris, if you're watching, go ahead and put in the comments of this video as well, and that way it's going to be easier for people to That's find. Full circle. There's cross-posting right there. Hey, <laughs> perfect. Hey, if, if you want to learn more tips and tricks, um, and see more stories about uh, ju just how to use uh, live video and how some other brands are doing it and more things, uh, just something as simple as what's the right thing to be wearing uh, when you're going live and you're going to be on a live video, please go check out our blog. It's at switcherstudio.com forward slash blog. And while you're in there, what we'd like you to do is just throw in your email and hit the subscribe button. Every time we update and put a new post up there, you're going to get just an email that's saying, hey, if you want to read this, go check it out. But there's tons of great information in there. Um, we feature different users. We're eventually going to be posting up different videos in there as well, just with product reviews and just how unboxings and how things work. So please go visit that. It's at Switcher Studio dot com forward slash blog and with that being said let's switch it it's time to switch <laughs> it switch up. it up right let's switch it up um, i like it so last week well it was kind of our user group question that we've gone with in the past um, and we'll talk a little bit about the user group later but um, this week we've got a gear review and i hope it's still here i've got it kind of hidden back there and jimmy's got it i'll switch there so irig mic hd2 is what we have um, I use this mic a lot. If you check out our YouTube channel, actually, a lot of the tutorials that I'm um, putting up out there are being recorded with this mic here. This is heavy. Um, yeah, it's a it's a nice it's a heavy mic. So I like it. It's got it's some heft to it. Yeah. So this is what the mic's gonna look like. Uh, I'll go through some things I really like about it. First of all, like when you just first hold it, like Jimmy said, it feels like a nice mic. Um, really powerful. So it's the handheld, which is good because you can pass it between a couple different people. Um, or there's another great way you can get multiple people on this. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so instead of being just limited to whatever's like the built-in mic or something, you can pass this around, get good audio. Um, it's going to pick up what's right in front of it really well and kind of drown out some of that background audio. Um, other two great things, and hopefully you can see this here if I come in. It's got a really good gain knob, so you can adjust your levels of your volume while you're live. 
and a headphone jack, which is great, so you can monitor your audio um, that's going into your into your iPad, so you can check and make sure your levels are good. Before and not to you interrupt you too much, but if you go check, if if it were plugged in, there's a nice little LED on top of there that glows blue, green, yellow, orange, and red uh, whenever you're peaking. So if you're talking into it and you're getting a little out of hand, you need to tone it down a notch. It'll tell you. Hey, it's it, we're peaking now. Turn it down. So you can't see that because it's not currently plugged in, but it's a really good feature to have right there. Immediate indication that you need to turn it down on the way into the switcher. So yeah, keep so, that in mind. <laughs> so um, a couple of things, I guess, how you're going to be connecting this to your device or whatever. Um, it comes with two cables. So this one here is the micro USB. It is micro, right? Not mini. Yeah, that one's micro. Micro, micro USB, and it's got the Thunderbolt or the Lightning. Is it Lightning? lightning. Lightning, man, I'm losing it. Uh, cable on the other side, so it'll plug right into your iPad um, and really easily done that way. Now, the other connection it has is a USB. So that's the one downfall I could see with this mic is not being able to charge your device while you're going live. Well, this USB here, this is how I just plug into my computer and record a lot of voiceovers and stuff with Audacity. Um, but again, yeah, this, this side here would plug directly into your into the mic and then this side will go into your computer or you could check out something like this here which is the USB um, I think they call it the camera adapter from Apple so this will plug in and this has so you can do USB so I can let's see if we can see this here plug this in and I can still have the charge cable so now I can use this mic plugged into my iPad and charge it at the same time uh, which makes it really really nice and really good to use so um, the last thing it comes with is a nice little tripod stand, so a little table stand. And this is actually how we use this exact mic when Jimmy and I were out at the NAB and we did the Stream Squad live from there. That's if you want right. to check that out, um, we actually just had this on a stand in front of us and we're able to do a really good recording from there. Um, another good example of this being used is um, Brittle Star. They do a morning show Monday and Friday. I'm sure if you search Brittle Star on Facebook, it's going to show up. It's like their cool morning show or something they call it. They actually use the older model. I don't know if they've updated yet or not, but the iRig Mic 1, which is still good. It doesn't have the headphone jack on it, and I think it only comes with the one adapter cable. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, still a good mic, still going to come with a little tripod and stuff. But all in all, if you're looking for a handheld mic that you can just plug in and forget about um, and just set up once, uh, really good. Uh, I see someone asked it for the price point. Oh man, I think it's just at $100. Um, yeah, I looked it up not too long ago. I think it was sitting around like $99 yeah, on Amazon. I, I think I saw it at 99 as well. Yeah. But I'm um, right about that. But uh, hey, if you want to do us a favor and just Google that real quick and post a link. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, I was really upset for a while when I couldn't find the iRig mic hd ones around online anymore because i was recommending those and i guess it was just because they were phasing those out to make room for the iRig mic 2 which is leaps and bounds better um, so yeah if you're looking for a good handheld mic definitely check this out um, and they didn't pay us to say that yeah they didn't pay us i mean we're using all sorts of iRig stuff we have we like, have this end. one's this one's not even open yet we have like two more of these in the back we got like three about a month ago and we're just kind of like we've got them just in case so mm -hmm. Yeah. Never know. Uh, never <laughs> yeah. know. But they're just really portable and simple. I agree. That's you need one mic and you need to do a yeah, that's a great it's a great um, mic to have. Yeah, so that's that's what I've got here for this uh the switch it up segment, this gear review of the iRig mic two. Um one of the reasons we did this gear review is in our user group, um, we, we do get quite a few questions about what mic should I use. I think there was one recently about um, wireless mics and people were helping that person out there. Um, Angela, I think you've got a, a little bit more information about that user group and how people could join. Yeah, so we bring this up on the show each week and we get a large amount of people coming into the group after the show each week. So thank you guys so much. But this is a user group we have on Facebook. It's just a big online community called Switcher Studio Enthusiasts. We're getting really close to 3,000 members, so we're all super excited. But it's a place where you can share tips and tricks for using Switcher Studio. You can share links to productions you've done with just some info on, you know, what kind of a setup was used what kind of equipment was used. There's all kinds of good things happening in that group and the entire Switcher Studio team is in there as well. So there are three ways to join. The first way, of course, is if you are watching this on our Facebook page right now, 
Just click on groups using the menu on the left hand side and it'll take you directly there. Now, if you also just type in Switcher Studio Enthusiast, it'll also take you directly to the group. And the last option, if you're already a Switcher Studio user, just log in at switcherstudio.com to your account and you'll be able to click on join the online community. So whichever of the three ways you take, there's gonna be a short survey to fill out after you hit join group. It just lets us know more about how you're you're using Switcher Studio and how we can make it even better for you. And then you'll be able to have full access to the group. So it's definitely a great place to be. I highly recommend joining whether you are, uh, you know, already using Switcher or just thinking about it. And one of the things I, I want to bring up, because I do see a couple questions in the comments here that are very sp Switcher specific. And one of the things that we do in that user group is Angela and I, um, we do it every Wednesday after the after Stream Squad, so that's going to be about an hour and a half at 4 p.m. We do a whoops, dropping my mic. Uh, <laughs> uh, we do a webinar talking about um, how to set up your Switcher Studio stream, uh, get it out there for the first time, make sure everything is going well, and we answer any questions we get in there. So um, if you all have any questions, um, please join the user group and you can uh, watch that webinar that we do at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Angela and I will be happy to help you out. Right inside the user group. Yeah. It's awesome. They yeah. come right to you. And one thing that we also <laughs> love about the group, you know, as we mentioned, is, you know, it's a great place to share live video you've done. Now, we highly recommend if you're posting, you know, any video you've created on other social media to use the hashtag made with switcher. We look through that tag. We love seeing what you guys have created and it's the easiest way for us to really get a look at your videos. And that brings us to our last segment on Stream Squad, the hashtag made with Switcher segment. And what we like to do is just show you guys an example of a great Switcher Studio video from you know the past week or so. And this is actually one that's very recent. It's about 24 hours old at this point, but it's the first episode of the Hector Martinez football show. Uh, so this took place Tuesday evening, Australian time. I've got some pictures here first yeah, before we get into we've the- we've got some awesome pictures of that. And these were taken by uh, Jamie Carter, who is a part of the Switcher Studio enthusiast group. And before he went live, he posted those pictures just to show, you know, how he had set things up. You can see, you know, he's got his mixer over to the side. He's, you know, got his uh, camera set up. So that way people could really get a look at what he was going to be doing. But he was running things behind the scenes. Uh, Hector Martinez, who is a retired football player from the Sydney Olympic. Uh, he was the main one hosting the show, of course. Uh, he also had one of the coaches he'd hired, Johnny McLean, on, and one of their current players, Michael Gilprovsky. And, you know, they just had a great 30-minute show going over, you know, what's going on with football currently. This is uh, you know, not American football for anyone watching and wondering, but you know, what's going on with Australian football? Um, they did a great job with, you know, a pretty simple setup. They have an intro graphic letting people know they're about to go live. They've that. got three camera angles. Yeah, they've got a funny one. Like the grab a drink, <laughs> won't a be drink. long. Won't be long, <laughs> which is perfect because they were at uh, the Cosmopolitan Double Bay. So it fits, you know, where their location is as pod. well. <laughs> um, they've got three camera angles. So they've got a wide shot. They've got a close up on Hector and a close up on Johnny and Michael. Um, and they've got great audio. So despite being in a really busy location, you know, you can hear all three guys really well. There's, you know, a light ambient noise in the background, which actually really helps the video, but you're not distracted by things going on in the background. And they've got a really cool animated outro video that they were able to throw in as well. So, you know, we wanted to show this broadcast and, you know, let you guys see that you don't have to go, you know, really overboard with tons of stuff everywhere. It doesn't take much to pull off a great first broadcast. Um, again, you know, make sure to consider the audio, especially if you're in somewhere crowded like this. 
to make sure you've got a really nice setup. And also, you know, a broadcast like this gives you a really personal look into people. So a lot of people might already know Hector or Johnny or Michael, but they know them as football players and now as coaches, whereas this gives you a really in-depth look as to who they are for 30 straight minutes. What I, what I really like about this video and a lot of the videos that come through with hashtag made with Switcher is in, in a lot of cases, uh, these videos are coming up and they're from remote locations. So uh, Jamie, you know, if you're watching now, if you think about it, this is probably not where he's typically setting up a camera, but with Switcher, it really gives you the ability to go to these remote locations and set up uh, a live stream like this and do a production that if you had like traditional cameras, you'd probably be running cables into a Switcher. With Switcher Studio, you can do this wirelessly. So especially if you're going to be doing remote kind of things and setup, it's really just going to make Switcher really makes it a lot different. I really I think it was just a great way of using how Switcher was set up with all this. But um, you know, with with all that being said, I think that's the end of our show. Yeah. It just came and went so quickly, and we're so sorry about that. But hey, listen, uh, thank you all for tuning in to this week's uh, hashtag Stream Squad. Uh, don't forget to check us out next week. Um, I, just remember, if you haven't done it already, we want you to follow us, and it's really simple. If you're watching this video right now on a phone. Just uh, reach out, tap on the screen, and then there's going to be a little thing popping up from the bottom there. And it's just pretty simple. Just tap on the button that says follow, and it says now you're following. It's that easy. Um, but we do want you to do that. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And just come join us when we're live. It's so much more fun. We can get you in the comments. We can say hi to you and everything like that. But otherwise, we will see you next week at 2 p.m on Wednesdays and every week after that for that matter. But 2 p.m. on Wednesdays right here at switcherstudio.com forward slash, or I'm sorry, facebook.com forward slash switcherstudio. But please go visit us there as well. I think I'm done. Thank you everybody. Take care. Thanks Have a so great much. Week. Bye, guys. All right.